Hey everybody, in this one we're going to take a look at the mechanics of doing variable substitution. So the goal is not to show you how to do variable substitution. Got a lot of videos on that. I want to show you some of the underlying graphical magic that powers variable substitution. So in other words, imagine we're going to focus on a simple example but really explore it in depth. Imagine we have, for example, this integral, say from 1 to 2 of e to the 2x dx. Now, I'm quite certain that you can do this, especially if you're really interested in mathematics. Just do a simple variable substitution and so on. If you like, we can use <laughs> Wolfram Mathematical. But let's actually visualize the process. So what I'm going to do is, let me turn my grid on. I'm going to show you some of the underlying flow of transforming from one variable space to another variable space. I think it's fascinating. So specifically, what I'm going to do is draw the x-axis going straight down. So let me do that first. I'm going to say that this is my x-axis going straight down the page. Remember, it's our world. We can do essentially whatever we like, as long as you follow the basic rules of algebra and so on. Nothing says that you got to always graph one way or another. You're free to do things in any way that gives you some new insight or perspective on things that you find useful or informative or insightful. So let's call this the x-axis. And I'm going to... Okay, my x-axis. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my integrand e to the 2x and I'm going to plot that between 1 and 2 because those are the limits of integration. Remember the limits of integration are limits on x, which means this is x equals 1. And up there, to be clear, let me erase that, that is x equals 2. So when I carry this out, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to number my x-axis. So here, this is going to be x equals 1. And this is going to be x equals 0. And then, let's see, this is going to be x equals 2. And next, take a look. Because the integrand is e to the 2x, and because of the way I have my x-axis oriented, not left, right, but up and down, I'm going to evaluate the integrand. So in other words, for example, when x has the value 1, you plug it into the integrand, which is e to the 2 times 1 then. So that's e to the second. So I'm going to depict that over here, not as above, but to the left. Like, for example, this represents right here. Let me draw a little dash segment here. I want to keep things neat. This is, for example, e to the second. And the same thing when x has the value 2. This is if I were plugging it into my integrand. And because the integrand is e to the 2x, when 2 goes in there, it's going to be e to the fourth. So let me see. I'm going to make that one a little bit bigger, say it comes up to here or something like that, okay? These don't have to be exactly the right way, we just have to more or less suggest things. So say this point is e to the fourth. So instead of again viewing this the normal way where this would be above the x-axis, now it's just to the left of it. And then this is kind of like the top of it. So this would represent, let me zoom in on this so we can understand what this represents. This would be e to the 2x. And our integral would be finding the area here. So in other words, our integral would be finding this area. It would be the integral from 1 to 2 of e to the 2x dx. It would be representing uh, finding that area. Let me uh, trace over it so we can make sure that we've got the right things in place here. So it would be finding this area, just like that. The domain of integration is from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So it's that. Let me trace over it and emphasize this point. It begins here and it ends over here. So I'm doing that in blue so we can emphasize that point, the domain of integration. Now we're going to do a variable substitution and we're going to visualize that process. So when I look through this, I see that over here in the top, for example, I have 2x. So I'm going to let u or p or z some letter. It can be any letter you want it to. You can call it Bob if you want. <laughs> That's not special. Imagine that I set u equal to 2x. This already has a whole world of consequences. Let's stop and think about that. So first of all, when I look at this, I see that u equals 2x. This is already a function. Every time x changes by 1, u changes by 2. That's what the slope on the x means. You see that? So this is a transformation from x space to u space. And you're hoping that as you do this, the reason is once I am in u space, then perhaps the integration can be carried out more easily. That's the motivating, perhaps, benefit that you're seeking but as you know very likely there's always a price to be paid so here what i'm gonna do is this take a look this transformation u equals 2x it's as if basically i had 
2 over 1 x. That's a slope of 2 over 1, which means every time x goes up by 1, like that, u goes up by 2. And then when x goes up by 1 again, u is going to go up by 2 again. That's what the slope means. So here, I'm going to draw in a u-axis. And I want to make sure everything looks really to the, as clear as possible. So the u-axis will be perpendicular and it's going to go this way. Okay, I, can, I think I can do that a bit better. I, can, I think I can begin from about here. So this is my u-axis here. And let's again number things. So in this space, this would be u equals 1. This would be u equals 2. This would be u equals 3. This would be u equals 4. This would be u equals 5. This would be u equals 6. This is my new variable space. Just an axis. And I'm going to draw the transformation curve, which says that u equals 2x. That's the slope of 2 over 1. So to do that, come back over here. Let me grab this, and I'm going to say every time x goes up by 1, which in this case really means I'm going along the x-axis down. In other words, every time x changes by 1, u changes by 2. And when x changes by 1, u changes by 2. And when x changes by 1, u changes by 2. You see that? So it looks like that. That curve that I've just drawn, this represents, let me not change colors here too much, u equals 2x. Once that curve is in place, then we can begin transforming from x space, which looks like this, to u space, with the hope that in u space the integration will be easier than in x space. So take a look. For example, when x has the value 1, this has to transform to u space to get a new lower limit of integration. When I carry that out, it's going to be this. See this? It's going to go from here to here. So if you look at that dashed line, you see u equals 2. So the new lower limit of integration in u space is 2. And in other words, what I'm doing is, I'm going to make this as thin as possible. It's got to fit. So this says u equals 2 times x equals 1, which is just 2. So it takes you over to the value 2 on that side. Now let's transform x equals 2 from x space to u space. So when I carry that out, you see it's going to take you over to here, and then over to here, and that says that u equals 2 times 2, which is 4. So that then takes you over to here. And now something happens that should be definitely noted, which is, look carefully, that this domain an x space, which goes from 1 to 2, and u space, it becomes twice as wide. You see that? And why is it twice as wide? Well, let me first of all erase this small stray mark over here. It's twice as wide for this simple reason. A lot of the reasons, in fact, are very simple, which is that this value right here is present. Because that 2 is present, that 2 has the effect of stretching the domains. In other words, when you go from x to u, the domain is transformed by multiplying it by 2. It's making it twice as big. So that number there is very important. And you see that over here in action because from 1 to 2 is 1, so that's 1 unit in width. But over here from 2 to 4 is 2, so that is 2 units in width. This is twice as big. This also happens, to keep in mind, even on a microscopic scale. So in other words, imagine I zoom in on the x-axis here and a microscopic value okay you have to be really careful here might be something that roughly say begins from here and ends here say so this is a microscopic chunk of the x-axis like this so over here because this is x space this would be basically dx and then when you map it to u space it's going to become du but let's actually carry that out and see what happens as a result so grab this edge of it and you have to do this just so that would take you to about here the u-axis Grab that edge of it, make sure everything is aligned, and that takes you to about here on the u-axis. And if you look at it very carefully, I think you will notice pretty quickly that this here is twice of the other one. So here, this portion along the u-axis, that could be called du, but it's equal to 2dx. It's twice as big as the dx portion on the x-axis. And that happens, again, because this 2 is present. That 2 that you see over here, that's exactly coming from here, from the slope of that red line. Look at the slope of that red line. This is the key. Whether it's on a big scale or a microscopic, microscopic scale, 
it's the key. So in other words, this triangle represents the slope. And I hope you see how this portion is mapped using that basically to, let's see, uh, this one is fine. It's mapped to this portion right here. So that color that's horizontal to you is twice as big as the other one. And that is the slope of this red line that takes dx from the x-axis and through that red line maps it over to du along the u-axis but it stretches it by a factor of two. Let's zoom back out. The next goal would be to take the curve that you see and map it over to u space. Let's carry that out. Go back to the integral for a second and remember the integral says from 1 to 2 so we have already changed the limits. We changed the limit because u is now 2 and u is 4. We've got the new limits of integration. So let's rewrite this now as follows. We're gonna have the integral from 2 to 4. So again those values are present because over here look carefully the x equals 1 was transformed into u equals 2 and x equals 2 was transformed into u equals 4. Those are the new limits of integration in u space. So you have to put those as 2 and 4 over here. The new function is e to the u, we are replacing 2x with u, and then instead of integrating with respect to x, in other words along the x-axis, we're going to integrate it along the u-axis, so you put du over here for that reason. And now you have to stop and do a fundamental adjustment, which is the following. You see this dx that you see along the x-axis, because of the slope of the red line, is transformed into 2dx, so du equals twice dx. But over here in our integrals we have only a dx. So that du has to be divided by 2 for that reason. In other words, you begin here where it says du, du equals 2dx, and if it, as it were, I'm gonna make this thin, you solve for dx, so dx equals du divided by 2. If you don't do this essential step, then you see that the region of integration in U space is twice as wide as the region of integration in X space, which means that the value of the integral you find here in U space will be twice as big. That's why over here, you need to take du and divide by 2. You have to, in other words, if you like, you can always imagine that it represents the same thing as multiplying by a half. So that's as if you were doing this. It's constant, so you can pull it outside the integral just like this, you see? It's the from 2 to 4 in U space, but then you got to multiply by 1 half or divide by 2. So B and that is so because U equals 2X, the red line distorts the domain. Once that is in place, then we can pretend to graph E to the U. So that roughly speaking, I don't have to be perfect at this point, is say this represents E to the second. And let's see, let's say this is just a little bit higher. Let's say this represents E to the fourth and the curve looks like this. So this new integral finds this area right here. Let me pretend to zoom in on it with some shading. There we go. So this kind of looks like this. So that area looks like this. It's this area here. That's what the integral represents. That would be the integral that looks like this, this portion. And then you multiply by the one half. So that is only one half of that area that actually corresponds to the original area. And let's not forget, so we've done all of this work. We've understood that we can go from x space to u space. We understand that, for example, writing a u equals 2x means that the limits of integration are transformed. It also means that du is twice dx. That's why you have to divide du by 2 over here. All of this is done for what reason exactly? So that you hope this is easier to integrate because it's just e to the u here. That's easy to anti-differentiate and integrate and so on. So it's e to the fourth minus e squared. That's it. That's the same as if you did it over here where the area is shown in yellow. That is it for this one. I know this one was a bit of a rabbit hole, but mathematics often is when you think about it the right way. But there are connections among concepts that sometimes may not be obvious until you think about them just so. So for me, that personally means I simply let my imagination <laughs> go wild, but in a way that's still maintains structure and doesn't simply just disintegrate into a million disconnected pieces. That's a key step in mathematics. Use your imagination, but give it structure stuff. Thanks so much for watching.